Well, it's been a while since we've talked about the mystery of little red dots. Really bizarre, mysterious, and still unexplained objects discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope a few years back that all kind of look like this. Literally, little red dots. But today we're going to discuss at least two different studies that actually make some exciting discoveries and exciting propositions that present us with some other new ideas and actually do discover something extremely close to us that now has a chance to potentially explain everything once and for all, assuming we get new observations relatively soon. And so let's discuss some of these new studies in more detail, but I guess first a very brief overview of what exactly we know about these objects or I guess, more realistically, what we don't know. And while in general, these little red dots, or LRDs, all seem to be super ancient, they're also relatively faint. But more importantly, they're only visible in some wavelengths, which is why only a James Webb Space Telescope was able to discover them. They were previously invisible to the Hubble Telescope and to all previous observatories. And some of them seem to be super old. They essentially existed approximately 600 million years following the Big Bang. But as of today, almost 350 such objects have already been confirmed and most of them seem to exist between 0.6 to approximately 1.6 billion years since the beginning of the universe. Or just to rephrase this, 13.2 to 12.2 billion years ago. And all of them possess extremely similar emissions. But interestingly, every single one of them is extremely red in color. Which potentially suggests huge amounts of gas, lots of different dust, or something else covering something really massive and very powerful in the center. With additional observations also suggesting that these objects potentially spin very fast, based on the observations of hydrogen lines or the Balmer series lines, which seem to be extremely wide in comparison to other objects. This can only be explained if something is spinning very fast around the center. With at least one previous study calculating the velocity of spin at approximately 1000 km per second, which of course implies something very very massive in the center potentially some kind of a supermassive black hole. But on the other hand, they also possess certain properties that are very difficult to explain. For example, there are no X-ray emissions, and if these were supermassive black holes, that's actually kind of difficult to explain. To date, almost every active black hole has always emitted a lot of X-rays and a lot of additional energy. On top of this, their infrared emissions are more or less flat. Or basically they seem to possess a relatively similar temperature. But the strangest mystery, especially of this is black holes, is the fact that they seem to have very very low variability. They don't flicker much, they don't change in brightness much, they generally seem to have very similar brightness over time, which is once again not what we expect of a black hole that's constantly consuming a lot of mass. Every black hole we've seen so far, especially massive black hole, has generally flickered and changed brightness a lot very often in mere hours of active observations. With additional mystery also just being the fact that we don't seem to observe these in much older universe or at lower redshifts. Which imply that these objects potentially only existed in the first two billion years of the universe, transforming into something entirely different. Possibly into something like this, that was also discovered not so long ago and that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. But there is a new study that proposes that maybe this is something entirely different and something that could potentially solve at least one of the mysteries in the universe. The mysteries of how supermassive black holes came to be. And so in this first study, researchers assume that, okay, maybe these are not galaxies. Maybe. Instead of being active galactic nuclei, or even instead of being supermassive black holes, these are actually hypothesized supermassive stars, SMS. Hypothetical stars with masses in thousands or even hundreds of thousands of solar masses that could have existed a long time ago and eventually collapsed, forming first supermassive black holes. And over the years there's been a lot of propositions and a lot of hypothetical explanations for their existence, with all of them predicted to be very luminous, very hot, but potentially have short lifespans because they would consume fuel extremely quick. But they were all expected to be very massive and potentially very large, with the average mass of 100,000 times 
the mass of our sun. And they were also hypothesized to have formed in the early universe, but would only exist for just a few million years before transforming into something else. Although here their transformation would not cause a supernova, they would basically just collapse directly into a supermassive black hole. But while to date their existence and their explanations have always been based on various simulations and not really actual observations. Obviously because we've never seen them anywhere. Which is of course what this study tries to tackle. And so because the idea here is that these stars could only form in the early universe, and because they would then collapse into supermassive black holes, here would make sense why these little red dots seem to only appear in the early universe and also seem to appear relatively similar to one another. And so here, based on the observations of their spectrum and by comparing them to other stars, the main conclusion in the study is that these little red dots seem to represent direct photospheric light of these massive accreting supermassive stars caught in their final act right before the collapse. The collapse that should only take maybe a thousand years. And so essentially what the researchers are proposing is that this is literally the final stage before the formation of a supermassive black hole. And while well here the short lifetime of these objects would be consistent with the rarity of little red dots while also explaining why we don't see them in much older universe. But to try to prove their point further, Researchers also created an atmospheric model for these stars, suggesting that overall they should contain no metals and only contain hydrogen and helium, in essence representing these very very massive population 3 stars that would have very unique emissions. And while well, right now the simulations do match the luminosity of LRDs and the spectral features observed by the James Webb. Although here there's maybe one side note. This is only actually based on two objects. The object referred to as MOM BH1 and the object referred to as the cliff. This has not been applied to 300 objects known to us. And so at the moment this is just a hypothesis. But a somewhat interesting hypothesis that does try to explain these somewhat strange objects as literally very very massive stars, progenitors to a lot of supermassive black holes we observe today. Which if correct would actually solve a lot of mysteries all at once. The mysteries of population 3 stars, which we're still looking for, the mysteries of how massive black holes seem to form so early, and of course explain what these objects even are. But there's maybe a slight problem with this study that literally came out a few days after the initial publication. And the problem here is with one of the assumptions. The assumption that we don't see these objects in the much older universe or in the much lower redshifts. Because it turns out that that's not correct. Which takes us to probably one of the most exciting studies about little red dots in the last few years. The discovery of LRDs in the local universe. Because apparently they do exist closer to us and they're not unique to the early universe after all. And that's of course a super exciting and a somewhat bizarre discovery that kind of invalidates a lot of these previous ideas and previous propositions, suggesting that, okay, Maybe we have to go back to the beginning and try this again. And so let's discuss this particular discovery because it's actually super exciting and find out what's going on here. And this is of course very unusual, mostly because the location where these objects were discovered is at least 12 billion years old. In other words, it's just about two and a half billion light years away from us in a much, much older universe. With the discovery in this case, illustrating that the conditions required for little red dots is not exclusive to the early universe. And well, as always, this discovery was made completely by accident. Here by using an older survey known as Sloan Digital Sky Survey with a telescope in New Mexico, scientists discovered three separate objects that looked exactly like little red dots discovered by the James Webb. As a matter of fact, they seem to fit every single property and there was absolutely no difference between this and the ones I showed you previously, except of course, the redshift. These existed 13 billion years ago, whereas the images from these objects seem to be only 2 billion years old. And ironically, we still have no idea what we're looking at. Here, each of these objects is about a million times more massive than the Sun, but strangely enough, only has a size of the solar system. So here we're talking about very, very massive, extremely compact objects. With one of them currently referred to as the egg because of its somewhat unusual elongated shape. And well, right now, the only thing we know about them is that they seem to match exactly what the James Webb discovered, but they seem to be very different from any other object known to us. And that includes black holes and of course stars. And so here, once again, these objects are very compact. They seem to have flat infrared emissions. They seem to have very broad hydrogen lines. 
suggesting something spins very fast, seem to produce no X-rays, and seem to have no variability or no flickering. Would that one elongated object referred to as the egg? The object that you can also see pictured in this image, surprisingly having temperature very similar to a typical yellow supergiant star, but also containing quite a lot of calcium, quite a lot of sodium, some potassium, iodine, and even iron. And these strong metal absorption lines are almost never seen inside galaxies, near central black holes, or even in interstellar medium. As a matter of fact, it actually seems to resemble a typical supergiant or a hypergiant star. With researchers concluding that this seems to be the result of a very thick gas envelope that seems to be very, very similar to stellar atmosphere, basically making this object appear as a huge star from a distance. As a matter of fact, even the temperature and the lights coming from this object seem to appear star-like. But in this study, the researchers do not propose this to be some kind of a supermassive star. Instead, they actually do think these are progenitors to supermassive black holes, with much smaller black holes in the center, surrounded by an enormous amount of gas that then starts to emit a lot of hot radiation, giving rise to the emissions that make it appear as a typical star-like object. And if we were to somehow illustrate this, it would essentially look like this. But more importantly, they also propose that the slight deviations and slight differences we're observing, especially when it comes to the egg shape of this object, basically comes from the point of view. By observing this object from a certain direction, it will just appear slightly different, which actually does make a lot of sense. But in a nutshell, their explanation is that this is a black hole surrounded by a huge amount of gas, which starts to create star-like emissions of massive proportions. But obviously this is just the first explanation and some of the first observations. As a matter of fact, because these objects are so close to us, future observations with the James Webb and the Hubble will definitely help us figure out what's happening here. But the overall conclusion from both of these studies is essentially that these are primordial supermassive black holes, representing the early stages of the formation of very massive black holes we often find in centers of various galaxies. As a matter of fact, there might be a lot of stuff around these objects, and possibly even a lot of stars and a lot of gas, but because they're so bright and because there's so much energy coming from the center, we just cannot see them, simply because the central object is way too powerful. Or maybe these are supermassive stars after all, as the first study tried to explain. Either way, for now at least, it's a little bit unclear, but this is definitely one of the most exciting discoveries about these objects in the last three years. And so hopefully in the next few months, we'll start getting some answers, focusing on questions like, what's the connection between this object and various supermassive black holes? And why are these objects so rare to begin with? And so chances are that within the next year, we'll come back and discuss this again, because this is definitely a super important discovery. And honestly, once we get more observations of this egg object, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more, because I'm sure the discoveries are going to be mind-blowing. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon, where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership where you can find additional videos and get early access, or by buying the wonderful percent t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.